This is MathGuy.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. We're going to take a look at domain and range in this video. Uh, and specifically the sections in this video are we're going to define domain and range. We're going to look at a cubic function. Next we're going to look at a square function. After that a square root function. And then finally a sine function. You can do domain and range for non-functions, otherwise generally called relations, um, but we're going to take a look at four functions and they turn out to be uh, parent functions as well. All right, let's get started. Let's talk about the definition of domain and the definition of range. So the definition of domain is the set of all x values within a relation. Uh, the definition of range would be the set of all y values within a relation. Okay, that's easy enough. So one thing to remember, uh, an easy way to remember domain and range from uh, figure out what their definitions are, D and R are in alphabetical order. X and Y are in alphabetical order. So if you line up D and R, if you line up X and Y, the D goes with the X, the R goes with the Y. So now you can see which one goes with which, makes it a little bit easier to do domain and range problems. So let's take a look at a specific example, a really easy one, so you can get the idea of domain and range real quickly. So let's start off with a set. I'm going to call this set, set A. Here's set A. So now what I'm going to do is graph these points on a plane, actually see a picture of what they look like. So here's our plane. Now I'm just going to slap on these points really quickly. So I've graphed these points. I have put them in the plane and you can see they're scattered around there a little bit. So according to the definitions um, I'm going to take the x values, lump them all together and I'm going to call that the domain. So what's the domain of this set, set A? Well let's see, I'm going to have negative 3, negative 1, I'm going to have 0, 2, and 2. See, this has an x value of 2, and so does this one have an x value of 2. So I don't need to repeat. So I just need to say that this relation has the x values negative 3, negative 1, 0, and 2. It doesn't cover any other x values. Those are all the x values in this relation. Let's talk about the y values. So the y values are just the y values of these points. So I've got a y value of negative 2, y value of 0, y value of 1, oh, another y value of 1, I don't have to repeat it, and I have a y value of 3. There you go. So I'm going to list those, and I'm going to call that the range. All right, so domain and range are not really complicated. Um, it does get a little bit tricky when you're talking about um, graphs of functions or relations, and that's what we're going to get into. So in the next section, let's talk about what a cubic is. All right, let's uh, take a look at a cubic. I've got a cubic drawn here. And what we want to do is take a look at uh, what the domain and range is. Let's start with domain, which is just uh, x values. So you know that by looking at this uh, curve that I don't have to do this, but there are an infinite number of points on this curve. Uh, and, I, and I'm putting them on here on the curve so you could see that, uh, you know, obviously I can't put all of them, but this red uh, curve really just means that there's a bunch of points and I don't have to put all the points on here uh, I just kind of show them with this sketch but there's really a bunch of points over here there's a bunch of points over here so I can't really approach this problem like the last one we did by looking at individual points there's just too many there's an infinite number of them so I'm gonna approach this problem a little bit differently I like to think what are all the x values in this graph. Well, I have a whole bunch of x values over here. The x values, you know, even goes through zero here. Zero for an x value. It goes through negative one. It goes through negative two. It goes through negative one and a half. There's all these x values. So when I do these problems, I think, where are the walls for the, and that'll kind of help us look at what domain represents. And then I look at the ceiling and floor. And that'll tell us what the range represents. All right, how does this help? Well, you'll see that this curve goes 
It, it takes on all these values and it keeps going left. So where could I put a wall here to the left? I can't. There's no wall. The, the, the graph is not contained by any walls. It just keeps going all the way forever to the left. Uh, on the right, it's the same situation. I can't put any walls here to, to contain this, this function. It just keeps going to the right forever. So there are no walls that I could uh, put left and right to, to contain this figure. It goes to the right forever. It goes to the left forever. So if I were to represent uh, or actually do, uh, talk about what the domain is, I'm going to represent the domain this way, and I'm going to show it as a set. Um, there's a lot of ways to do this. Um, some people put X such that I'm just going to say that it's all real values. Sometimes people say it this way. They say all real values. In other words, there's no end to it. Uh, sometimes people represent it this way, and it depends on how analytical your teacher gets, what kind of symbolism they want you to use. Sometimes they say, the answer is X such that, that's what this line stands for, it says X such that, and then they go on to define what the X's are. So they say X is less than infinity, but it's greater than negative infinity. Okay, so there's a little negative here, hard to tell. But in other words, the graph does not go to infinity forever, so it's less than infinity. It, it, you know, it, it's doesn't, it approaches infinity, it's never equal to infinity, and it's going to approach negative infinity, but it's always gonna be greater than negative infinity. All right, so two different ways to represent it. They both really represent the same thing. Let's talk about range. If you're talking about the range, it's the same situation for the uh, for the range. There is no ceiling that'll contain this curve. It, it really does go up forever. Um, I know it may look like it's leveling out, but it doesn't. It goes up forever, and this curve actually does go down forever. It's going down, but slowly. It's going down slowly. So if this curve goes up forever, and it goes down forever, there's really no limit on the range either. So we say that the range is all real values. Uh, or sometimes people say the range is y such that um, y is less than infinity or it's greater than negative infinity. And there you have it. That's what domain and range looks like with this graph. All right, let's take a look at a square function. All right, here you can see that we have a square function. Um, we have this uh, y equals x squared is what this function looks like. Uh, all right, so let's talk about what the domain and range, is, range are for this, starting, of course, with the domain. So if we're looking at the domain, we again think of what are the walls. Are there any walls to contain this? Walls are vertical. So uh, in other words, when you look at this curve, you can see that it does go right forever and it's going up forever. So it's gonna to go to the left for, uh, forever and it's gonna go up forever. This curve does not go down, you know? It, it, so it stops vertically right here. Okay, but looking at just the X values, we see that this curve will go left forever, will go right forever. There are no walls to contain this, this curve. It goes left and right forever. And it takes on all the X values from the left forever all the way to the right forever. All right, so we say it's very similar to the last one. We say that the domain is all real values. All real values, or we use the definition where we actually define things. It's x such that x is less than infinity or it's greater than negative infinity. All right, let's talk about the range. Okay, so the range is a little bit different. Now let's talk about ceiling and floor. We got the ceiling, we got the floor. So there is no ceiling. It goes up forever. This curve is not bounded vertically when we go up. It just goes up forever. Uh, however, when we go down, the lowest part of this curve is right here. It never gets lower than this point, right? It just rip, turns right at this point. So it's actually bounded 
going down. It never gets lower than zero for a y value. So notice that the lowest y value in this curve is zero. So I put my ceiling and floor up. There is no ceiling, but there definitely is a floor. It never goes past this line. Okay, so what's this curve? All right, well, let's see, it goes up forever. So I can't put all real values. Um, I could say it's y such that, uh, let's see, y, hmm, it's, it's going to be less than infinity, but it's going to be greater than or equal to, let's see, this point right here is 0, 0. So the lowest it gets is 0, and it actually is equal to 0. Now, when we have infinity in there, many times people do not write infinity. They say, oh, y is always greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so basically I'm taking this, um, I'm taking this inequality, I'm just flipping it around. And, and I'm not worrying about the, the top part. I know it goes up forever. So you just say that it's always gonna be greater than or equal to zero. It goes up forever. Okay, so this would be the preferred way to define it, and I would not usually show this, but they do mean the same thing. Okay, let's go on to the next one, which would be square root. All right, for this graph, we have the square root function. This is y equals square root of x. Just basic function, y equals square root of x. And we're looking at it, trying to determine what the domain and range is. So let's get right to talking about the domain. So the domain x values talk about walls what are the walls so this curve never gets further left than this point it never goes further right oh actually it does it keeps going to the right forever so it has a wall here to the left that it never gets past but it keeps going to the right forever so I can't put a wall over here it goes to the right forever so it's it's contained over here at this side but not the other all right so domain we would say since it's contained in that fashion, we would say it's x such that x is less than infinity, but it's going to be greater than or equal to 0. And again, if you just have one side infinity, a lot of times people change this. And they say, oh, x is just going to be greater than or equal to zero. We don't talk about the right side because it's assumed it's greater than or equal to zero with no bound to the right. So it's just going to be continuously go off to the right forever. So there's no need to talk about this because there's really no boundary here. It goes to the right. So it's just greater than or equal to zero. Let's talk about the range. That's next. All right, so we're going to talk about the y values. The y values are associated with range. Now we talk about the floor and the ceiling. Well, this curve goes up forever. I, you know, it's like a parabola on its side with one branch, but this branch is just going to keep going up and it's going to keep on going to the right forever. So there is no boundary to the top. However, it does not get any lower than this point. It never gets lower than this line. And this is the y equals zero line. So I would say that this curve is y, the range is y, such that, now let's define what the y is. Well, y is going to be less than infinity, but it looks like it's going to be, let's see, it's never going to go below zero, but it is going to be equal to zero. So you would say that it's going to be, y is going to be like that. It's always going to be greater than or equal to zero. So, uh, again, if you have an infinity on one side, sorry, I'm a little sloppy here. I'm trying to squeeze everything in. But the more preferred way to write this would be if you only have one side, no boundary here. We're going to say y is greater than or equal to 0. And that would be the preferred way. So it's read r, or the range, is equal to y such that y is greater than or equal to 0. All right, let's take a look at one more, the sine curve. All right, here we have a trigonometric function called the sine curve. This is y equals sine of x, just a basic parent function for the sine curve. So 
let's talk about domain. Domain, remember, we talk about walls. What are the walls that go with this? Well, um, let's see. It goes to the right forever. It goes to the left forever, right? Because that's what a sine curve looks like. It just keeps on looping up and down, going over, keeps going like that, that same wave-like fashion. So I would call it a sine wave. So let's see, it goes left and right forever. We've seen that many times. In other words, there's no boundary to the left, no boundary to the right. So we could say all real values. Or what some people like to do, they say it's x, such that now we define what x is. x is less than positive infinity, but it's going to be greater than negative infinity. Eh, finally, done that neatly. Great. About time I was neat. <laughs> All right, now let's talk about range. Now the range, we put down the ceiling and we put the floor down. And you can see that there is a ceiling and floor for this curve. It, it, this particular curve never gets higher than 1 for a y value. And it never gets lower than negative 1. So it looks like it just keeps bouncing back and forth between 1 and negative 1 forever. So what's the range? Well, I can't put all real values. It, it never gets beyond 1. It doesn't go to 2, 3, or 4. It doesn't go to negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. It's bounded. So I would say the range is y such that, let's see, it's going to be less than or equal to 1. Yep, it will be equal to 1 right here. When x is 90, the y value is 1. So it actually touches that 1. That's why I have an equal sign there. And the y value is going to be greater than or equal to negative 1. So right here at 270, the y value is equal to negative 1. Okay, so this says that the range is always going to be between 1 and negative 1. It doesn't go outside of that for this particular curve. Okay, so there you have it. We've seen a number of problems, a number of graphs, even some relation that just had points, and we did domain and range. Just remember, domain, look for the walls, and range, look for the ceiling and floor. So make sure you go back to mathguide.com, check out our other videos, check out our text-based lessons, and of course, our interactive quizzes. Take care.